All right, so this question comes in two pieces. Um, find the derivative first, and then secondly, find when the derivative is a certain value, okay? So let's have a look at this, and it is a, it is a challenging one. First principles is a long process, and so we try to, we often give you fairly simple functions up here. This is a bit of a mess because of that denominator, okay? So let's have a go at this. I do want to point out, actually, are they here? No, I think I took them away already. First principles is on the reference sheet, so you can, you can take advantage of that. Um, however, first principles is not that hard to remember if you remember what, what the derivative is. The derivative is about finding the gradient of a function, right? So let's do this together. I'm going to make this little subheading, first principles. By definition, gradient is rise over run, yeah? So if I think about rise over run, first principles just say, says pick an x, x value and go a little bit further, right? So the x value might be f of x, and if you go a little bit further, that'll be f of x plus h, where h is my little bit further, okay? If I want to find out rise, then I'm just taking the difference between those, okay? Just like I would put in y2 minus y1 into my gradient formula. That's the rise, but then the run is just that little bit further. Do you remember that? So that's why it's just h. Now, this is almost first principles. It's missing something. This is gradient between two points, y2 minus y1. There they are. And this is what you would get from x2 minus x1. But I don't actually want the gradient between two points. Um, that would just give me a secant. First principles gives me something better than that. It gives me the gradient of a tangent. So what do I have to add to this? The limit, very good. So, never been assessed on this before, so that's why this is a big deal. Now, they provide for you this particular f of x. So the first thing you do is just do the substitution, okay? There's my limit, and for those of you who um, were asking before, yes, you must write it every time, because if I didn't have a limit there, it would be a different gradient, okay? What is f of x plus h in this case? Have a look. I'll give you a clue. It starts with a 1 over. <laughs> so everywhere I saw x in the original function, I'll just substitute in x plus h, which as the neuro says, is x plus h minus 1. That's that function. And then over here, I'm going to have 1 over x minus 1. That's f of x by definition, all divided through by h. Okay. Now, remember where you're going to go from here. Okay. Wh what you're expecting is for something up here to have an h in it, which you can then cancel out. I can't put in h equals 0 right now because h is on the denominator. Okay? So you have a pair of fractions up there. What's a likely thing that you might do? OK, if I multiplied everything by x plus h minus 1, that would get rid of this, and it will put x plus h minus 1 down here. That's good. But I also have this to get rid of. right? I've got an x minus 1. So I should probably multiply by that. Also, does that make sense? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by both these denominators, okay? And that'll get rid of all the fractions on the top, and it'll put some extra factors on the bottom, because I'm multiplying top and bottom, okay? So uh, I'm going to do the bottom first, which is a bit counterintuitive. I've got x plus h minus 1, x minus 1, like so. And then on the top, when you multiply this fraction by this, what do you get? You'll just get this, right? Because the x plus h minus 1s, they'll cancel with each other. So we'll just get this guy. And then when I do the same to the second fraction, what will happen? Yeah, I'll just get this because the x minus 1s, just like before, they'll cancel. By the way, um, I'm putting everything in brackets. Anyone want to suggest why I'm doing that? Why is that a good idea? So that when I expand things, because you notice this minus sign here, which is kind of going to trip me up. Uh, when I expand things, I'm going to get all the signs correct. Okay. Now, before I go any further, uh, this looks weird and random. They've given you a bit of a hand by actually telling you what answer you ought to expect. Now, I just want you to have a look at, um, actually, Rhea, you're going to have to tell me again, what they're requiring us to prove. I think it's, what is it, minus 1 over x minus 1 all squared? Yep, I'm just doing it in my head. So when you have a look at that, um, see how there's an x minus 1 all squared on the bottom. That's what I'm expecting to get. Just have a look at this denominator down here. Have a look. 
Do you see that I should get there? I should, because eventually h is going to become 0, which means this will be x minus 1. This will also be x minus 1. So I'm on the right track. Okay. I'm not quite there yet, though. Have a look at the numerator. There's going to be some serious cancelling that happens up the top, right? Uh, let's get another colour here to help us. What's going to happen to the x terms? They're all gone. X is gone. What about that negative 1? Also gone, because negative 1 take away negative 1 is 0. So all you get left with on the top is, yeah, just watch out for that sign, minus h all over. Blah, 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 blah. And this is what I was hoping for, right? This is exactly what I was hoping for. On the numerator, I've just got a single h, and that's going to cancel, cancel. So my final line, or will be the final line, pretty much, um, will be, I can now evaluate the limit. I can actually try out and see what happens when h gets to 0. Um, you're going to have a negative 1 on the top. You're going to have x plus 0 minus 1 and x minus 1, like so. I'm pretty much there, aren't I? This last line doesn't get any marks because it was provided to you. So in fact, once you get to this line, you get the two ticks. Or yeah, it'd be two ticks for something like this. Okay. Does that make sense? See what I did? So just to finish out, part two says, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, find the values of x when this is the case. Find the values of x. Okay. So this is f dash x. So I'm solving this equation. Yep. So someone want to help me out? What could I do to simplify both sides? I could cross multiply, that would work. Um, you're going to get negative 4 over here, and you're going to get negative x minus 1 all squared over there. So do the negatives affect things when I cross multiply, in this case? In this case, they look OK. In fact, the reason why is because what I'm multiplying by is just these guys down the bottom, which are both positive. Do you notice that? But even so, this is an equation. You can multiply by negative numbers. That's OK. What is it that I multiply by negative numbers and it does get changed? It's not equations, but inequalities. And I'm OK. I'm in the clear from here. Uh, yeah? Could you just have x minus 1 squared equals 4? Well, this is the next suggestion I was going to make. Because you've got the same thing on the numerators, and you're just comparing, what you want is the denominators to be the same. Well, those are the denominators, right? I suppose what I'm doing is I'm taking negative reciprocals of both sides, but that's the same effect. Uh, I can say x minus 1 equals 2. So I've taken square root of both sides, which means plus or minus 2. And then this is going to give me two solutions, isn't it? Uh, if one of these is negative 2 and one is positive 2, when you add 1 to both of them, you should get negative 1 or 3. And you're home. Okay. Uh, of course, you can go ahead and you can test that out, but it's not too dramatic. You will get the derivatives, the gradients that you need. Okay. Any questions?